Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Learning with Leverage. Uh, my name is Misty Waldrop. I'm with Growth by Design. And today we have a very special guest with us. We have Emil Barr. Uh, he is the founder of Step Up Social. They have been a fantastic partner with Growth by Design. Uh, Step Up Social is the largest college student-run marketing agency in the world with over a million dollars plus in revenue. He has helped Fortune 500 companies, universities, and state governments reach younger audiences with social media. And Mia, we are so happy to have you here. Very excited to be here. Thank you so much for that introduction, Misty. My pleasure. We are so excited to learn more about how credit unions can supercharge their social media. We have seen this incredible presentation. And so I'm going to hand it off to you and we will get into this. Awesome. Thank you. Well, um, as Misty mentioned, just for some framing around this conversation, my name is Emil. Um, we do social media work for a lot of different companies and clients, but really what I want to talk to you about today is specifically what does social media look like for credit unions? Because one of the things that we tell clients is that the industry and the brand is going to matter so much more than what you might read. The issue with reading things in ad age or reading things in these large publications is they're very broad. But really, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to come together and create a presentation specifically on how credit unions can leverage social media platforms. Because the most important social media skills, for example, for a credit union are probably very different from a consumer packaged goods company that you know, sells deodorant at Walmart, for example. So um, I'm just going to kind of go into some of the best practices. This is designed to be a fairly short and painless presentation. Um, but if you have any questions at the end, really happy to answer them and kind of just get going. So I'll skip past this introduction slide because Misty already introduced me a lot better than I would introduce myself. But the one thing that I do want to talk to say about Step Up Social and why we've been able to grow so fast, as Misty mentioned, I started this company out of my dorm room when I was like 18 years old. Um, and really, we grew to a million dollars in revenue very quickly in a little but under two years. And one of the reasons that we've been able to grow so quickly is because one of the things that Step Up Social does very differently is we specialize in only doing ROI-driven social media marketing, meaning that for every client that works with us, what we like to do is we like to actually measure the dollars coming in to their social media marketing spend and trying to translate that to more dollars coming out. And while that sounds like common sense or logical, that's what we advocate any type of marketing, you should always be looking at in terms of for every dollar that I put in, am I getting at least a dollar out? And for some clients, Social media isn't a channel that can do that. And we're very upfront and we say, hey, there's not a way you can do that. But also social media is very broad. So really what I want to talk about is if you're a credit union, what does look putting $600 into social media to get $700 out? Like, what does that look like? And kind of share some best practices for that. But before we jump into that, maybe let's back up a little and talk about why social media matters, because there are a lot of different ways to market. You know, you have radio ads, you have print ads, you have online SEO, PPC, all these different channels. So where does social media fit in and why does social media even matter? Well, for starters, about 60% of the global population uses social media on a daily basis. 85% of people under the age of 60 in the United States use social media on a daily basis, which is crazy. So if you go in a room of 10 people, probably nine of them, as long as they're under the age of 60, are regularly checking their social media platform every day. That doesn't happen with radio. That doesn't happen with other forms of print media. Really, Google is the only thing that sees a higher usage rate in the entire world than social media. And then finally, one of these really important statistics that I like to mention on social compared to a few other things is people use social media to research products. Um, if you look, the younger they are, the more often people are actually using social media over Google to research products. But a lot of time what we see is people are going to Google a credit union institution, but they're also going to look them up on social media. About four out of five people are going to go in and actually check out a company's social media profile or institution before they think about using them for their banking needs or for their service needs or for any other type of need. Um, and then just a little tidbit that doesn't necessarily apply to social credit unions, but that's interesting to mention, is that over 50% of people on social media use it for inspiration for things to do and buy. So it's very much a consumer culture. Social media isn't necessarily a resource tool. But what we do see is people are regularly using social media to buy things. So they might see it for inspiration to buy things. So they might see a really cool thing at a retailer, a really cool cafe and experience, and they're open to sort of trying it out because they saw it on social media, which is something unique when we think about sort of what does that marketing approach look like versus when you're going to a website or you're doing like SEO. A lot of the times those people are actively looking for a solution with social media. It's a lot more passive and it's a lot easier as people are looking for inspiration as opposed to solutions to their problems, if that makes sense. Um, zooming through here, 
what I wanted to do is talk about some of the major social media platforms and why they matter and what makes them unique. Because every single social media platform is unique. One of the most damaging things you can do as a brand on social media is take the exact same content and post it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok. Well, you can't really post the same content on TikTok, but what that's something that we see brands do. They always ask me, you know, and what we tell people is the goal to a successful social media strategy is to create differentiated content and get really good at the one or two channels that matter the most for you. So we'll talk about what those are for credit unions in a second, but just to give some context on what makes every social media platform unique is kind of what I wanted to discuss here. So first of all, Facebook. So Facebook is known for a few things. The thing that Facebook is the most known for is number one is that it's really, really big. So right now, Facebook has 3 billion active users and it's responsible for 60% of social media web traffic, meaning 60% of links that are clicked on that come from a social media platform are all coming from just Facebook alone. Um, in terms of thinking about it as a marketer like myself, the other thing that we know Facebook for is that it is a paid ad behemoth. So about 20% of all global ads across all marketing is spent just with Facebook, and it's known very well for its paid ad reach. Um, for context, I believe it makes up 70% of social media marketing budgets, just Facebook as a platform. So Facebook is kind of like the big daddy in terms of it has the most users, it's going to have the most ad budget pouring in, and it's responsible still for most of the world's traffic. It is by far the heavyweight. Sometimes people say, oh, Facebook is out. If your target audience is under the age of 25, yes, we don't really see people in the US under the age of 25 using Facebook at all. But if your target audience is anywhere from the age of 25 to 75, Facebook is most certainly not out. It's still probably the leading platform. The second thing that we want to talk about is Instagram. So Instagram was started as an independent company, but fairly on to its journey, it was acquired by Facebook, and it is now the world's second largest and most popular social media platform. One of the cool things about Instagram is all of that paid ad reach that you can get with Facebook, all of the really detailed metrics, kind of all of those tools actually work the exact same way on Instagram. Um, it's the same exact ads manager that lets you run Facebook and Instagram ads at the same time. But in terms of things that are different is Instagram typically skews to a younger demographic. Um, you see less ads on Instagram than you do on Facebook. There's a little bit more organic content. A lot of times people are catching up with their friends on Instagram more than they would be on Facebook. And it's a little bit more expensive to advertise on because that younger demographic comes with a premium price tag because they're a little bit harder to reach. Those are sort of the two heavyweights, but there are a few other platforms that we always get asked about that I just want to briefly kind of touch on. So the first is TikTok. Everyone always asks me about TikTok. What's the deal with TikTok? So TikTok is by far the fastest growing social media platform. In a matter of four years, it went from no one had ever heard of it to becoming the third world's third most popular social media platform. It's broken every record for social media app growth, for social media active users, for growth. But it is still fairly significantly smaller than Facebook and Instagram. The reason that TikTok is getting a lot of attention from marketers like ourselves is that even Facebook or Instagram didn't grow quite as fast as TikTok grew. Um, some unique things about TikTok is it skews very young. The average age of a user is under the age of 20, I believe, on the platform. And it is sort of growing market share. So right now it accounts for 20% of social media web traffic. LinkedIn is a little bit different. It's totally different from Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. But the way I explain it to people is it is the only B2B social media platform. So if you're a business selling to other businesses, or if you're a credit union trying to talk to small businesses about your loan program, for example, on LinkedIn, it would be totally socially acceptable to say, hey, this is what you need to know about securing a business line of credit for your local business versus on Facebook. That's something that would be perceived as an ad. People aren't really looking for that content. People go on LinkedIn every day trying to learn about different business topics, kind of trying to share information about their business. It has a much smaller reach. And in terms of the amount of hours people spend on the platform, it's much smaller, but there is definitely a skew on sort of that business to business interaction piece. And then finally, Twitter, um, which now I guess is called X, um, which has had a lot of changes. Um, what I'll say about Twitter is that the thing that's stayed consistent, even with Musk's acquisition of Twitter a few months ago, is that Twitter has always been about conversations instead of content. 
So every other platform is asking the user to create content, to create things that get lots of interactions that people are engaging with. On Twitter, it's a lot less about creating a viral post or creating value. And it's a lot more about starting conversations. So that the way that we explain Twitter is it's sort of like a crowded room where everyone's talking to each other versus LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. That's like a theater where you have a stage and people are trying to put on a production, you know, and everyone is watching versus Twitter. It's just sort of like a room where everyone's just sort of talking to each other, like a party and like sort of small conversations. Conversations, and that's kind of how we explain Twitter for marketers. So there's definitely a niche that can be reached there. Um, but typically, we don't see this as quite a high converting marketing platform as the other platforms I mentioned. Uh, any questions there before I move on to social media strategy? Yes, absolutely. Let me get these pulled up for us. Yeah. So in your opinion, which social media platforms are the most advantageous for credit unions and, and creating that content? I don't know if that's coming later in our presentation, but like, how do you create and tailor that content for each platform? So um, we'll talk about tailoring content for each platforms. In terms of the content that's going to be most advantageous for credit unions is it's really going to be my platform. So it's going to be Facebook and Instagram. And there's a few reasons for that. I think the number one reason is that credit unions naturally have a restricted membership base. You can't promote to everyone. And what Facebook and Instagram will let you do for very cheap, I believe it's like $5 per post, is it will let you actually promote your posts to a very narrow audience. Meaning that on Facebook, you could make a post about a new um, auto loan that you're offering and specifically target it to people that fit your membership base in your desired zip codes that are looking at purchasing automotive vehicles. And that's a very powerful advertising tool. And that's very powerful for a credit union because you're talking to people that you need to be talking to that are currently looking for your product. No other social media platforms are going to let you do that. And very few other forms of marketing are going to let you have that level of precision. So for credit unions, by far, Facebook and Instagram are advantageous just because they're going to give that ability to target to people in your membership base. If you're restricted by job title, or if you're restricted most often, what we see is by location, like you can service a certain zip code or geographic area, Facebook and Instagram are going to allow you to make sure that your content is reaching people that only fit your prospective membership base versus all of the other platforms. You're just hoping that people that might fall into your membership base see it versus directing that sort of flow of communication, if that makes sense. Um, in terms of content, That'll get into kind of what is good social media content look like for each platform. The truth is that the actual good social media content isn't too different from platforms, but the format in which you deliver it is very different. So Facebook, like the image dimensions are different for all content. Um, Instagram and Facebook have different image dimensions. They have different ideal caption lengths. They have different best times of data post. So that's kind of when we get into a tailored content strategy. Um, I can sort of, I'll go into more detail on that once we sort of talk about social media content, just because I think that'll be a better set. Way. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds great. Cool. Um, well, if there's no other questions, um, I'll sort of move into the second part of the presentation. So the first part was designed to just be an overview. What are the different social media platforms? What are they good for? Kind of why does it matter? Um, the second part is kind of what makes a compelling or an effective social media strategy. And this is very simple. People meet with me all the time. They're like, Emil, you run a social media company. How can I grow on social media? And it really isn't difficult. The number one way that you can create good social media content is about avoiding selling. Every time that we see brands struggling on social media, it's because they're posting ads. Come check out this auto loan. Come check out, you know, create a checking account with us. Open up a new membership account. Did you know we're having this discount? And that simply doesn't work on social media. Ads almost never work on social media because social media isn't about selling. Social media is about building a sense of community. So good social media starts with content that resonates with your audience. And what we really have is we have a very simple test that we can call this. I call this the golden rule of step up social. Um, we make everyone a step up social whenever they create content and read this. And that is the sort of test for you to know if a post is good or if it's not a great post for social media is put yourself in your customer's shoes if you're at home on a Thursday evening at 7 p.m., you might have had a little bit of wine, you just put the kids to bed, you know, um, and you're relaxing, you finally get a chance to go through your phone and you're scrolling through Facebook or Instagram and you see a post. Is that a post that you would share with your friends? 
Liking it is one thing. Commenting is one thing. By far the most important sort of metric to see if a post is going to get distributed through the algorithm and reach a lot of people is the number of people that are resharing a post. So you should ask yourself, is this something that I would get enough value for that I would think is funny enough that I think would helpful enough that I'd actually take it and I would send it to my husband, that I would send it to my teenage daughter. And if it's not, if that's not a piece of content that you don't react that way, if it feels like an ad or if it's about an auto loan or if you sort of roll your eyes and you're like, why does this person keep posting? Like, I don't want to see these pictures. That is not a good piece of social media content. Um, so what is, what makes good social media content? Cause I just told you guys a lot of things not to do, which I guess is helpful, but then you sort of ask me, well, what can you do? And for credit unions, we sort of see really three categories, three content pillars of social media content that tends to perform well and that people tend to really enjoy on social media. So the first is funny content. People like to laugh. People are typically looking for a distraction from their typical day to day. Um, so memes work great. Um, you guys have all seen memes. There's a few examples. So for example, if you're promoting an auto loan down here, we have don't mull it over, get a new ride. That's something that would make you giggle and make you laugh if you're looking for a car that's you're going to build a lot of favorability. That's something you would give a like to. The second category for credit unions that really matters is that financial education piece. So a lot of times what you guys are experts in is finance. You guys are experts in teaching people about their finances, how they can optimize their finances, and that's a skill not many people have. So creating a post explaining what is a CD and kind of giving people information, creating a post explaining people what are the different rates on credit cards, what do they mean? That sort of subject matter expertise, that's something people find valuable. That's something that might know what it is and they're willing to interact with that post. And those types of posts perform really well on social media. And then finally, the third thing is credit unions. You guys are really pillars of your community. You're probably a lot more involved in your community than like a national bank. So oftentimes you might be attending community events. You might actually know the names of people that are coming into your branch and all of that. So community updates are another really important pillar. And these are things like this is an event happening in the community. This is a way we supported, you know, a fundraiser in the community. This is something we're doing. That type of thing, just how, you know, credit unions to typically build an audience through being engaged in the community while engaging with your community on social media, uh, people that live in your membership base, you know, um, attending those events, posting pictures of you attending those events. That does really well and that tends to perform really well on social. So. That's kind of the type of content. Um, in terms of what does good social media distribution look like? Because there's two pieces to social media uh, strategy, right? The first is what do I post? And the second is how do I post it? So that was what do I post? This is going to talk about how do I post it? And there are really three keys to successful social media distribution and growth. And they are consistency, micro boosting, and reporting. And we're going to talk about each one in a little bit more detail. So the first is consistency. The number one thing that algorithms are looking for, and well, one of the number two, two things, but the number one thing for credit unions that algorithms are looking for is they are looking for consistency. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, everything, they track exactly how many times per week on average you post, how many times per day you're on the platform, and the accounts that post the same number of times per week are going to do way, way, way better because Facebook's like, wow, these people are really using it. They really care about our platform than accounts that post sporadically. So what consistency looks like is it's, it's a lot better to post once per week, for example, for four weeks than it is to make four posts in one week and then not post for three weeks. So what we advocate for brands to do if they really want to hit that consistency aspect and consistency point is it's very simple. Just create a posting schedule. It's perfectly fine to plan your posts 30 days ahead, or with some credit unions, we even plan them 90 days ahead. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to schedule in advance what days of the week you're going to be making what posts, even three, four weeks in advance. You're going to want to explain what you're going to be posting about, and then you're going to want to stick to that calendar and try to get on a consistent cadence, whether that be once per week, twice per week, four times per week, kind of whatever you're comfortable with. Typically, we don't recommend brands post more than four times per week because then people get annoyed because all they do is they see your stuff and they log on and that has the opposite effect. The second thing is this idea of micro boosting, which I mentioned. So 90% of business content on meta platforms is paid, meaning of business content on meta platforms, excuse me, is paid, which means that nine out of 10 posts made by businesses have ad spend behind them. If you are not currently spending money 
on these platforms, even a little bit, which I'll get into in a second, you are already behind 90% of your competitors and your content is going to perform worse by default than 90% of other businesses on the platform. So it's a huge disadvantage. And that's something when we speak to credit unions, a lot of times they don't know what boosting is or they haven't been doing it consistently. And what we really advocate for everyone to do regardless of if you work with us or you're running your own social media platform, is you absolutely should boost every single post. So not boost your best post of the month, but every single post should have some element of paid spend. Now, the reason we call it micro boosting is because it can be micro. So what we tell brands is dedicate at least $10 in ad budget per post. What that looks like is if you're posting five times per month, you're only spending $50 a month on Facebook ads. But what we recommend doing is by taking $10 and putting it behind every single post, that's going to do two things. The first is Facebook is going to be like, oh, this is a piece of paid content. We're going to show it to way more people because this is a business. This is paid content. That'll hopefully incentivize them to spend more money with us in the future. But the second is as soon as you boost a post, you can set that targeting that I mentioned earlier, meaning that when you boost, when you just post something into the ether, it's going to go to whoever sees it. There's no way you can control who sees it. As soon as you spend at least $10 behind a post, you can set a defined audience that you want to see your post. So you can say that I want people of this age in this zip code that are interested in this particular item, like an auto loan to see my post about auto loans. And that is a massive advantage in terms of actually getting in front of the right people in your membership audience. Now, the one thing I will say is that credit unions are unfortunately subject to special boosting regulations. Um, all this means is you can't quite get as invasive as like a consumer packaged goods brand, meaning that you can't target people by like their street address or their marital status or a few other things, um, their race, just because there are restrictions with you guys being financial institutions. But overall, you can still target by zip code and location, which we see is super important as well as by their overall interests. What are they interested in? What are they searching in? So number two, the most important thing you can do in addition to posting consistently is actually going in and just spending $10 behind every post you make, even if it's only $50, $100 a month, just to really get that 10, nine times higher reach on average than posting organically. And then the final thing that we mentioned sort of in a really strong social media study is reporting. So data is going to be everything. And there are some sort of things that we call vanity metrics, which are like, oh, look how many followers I got. This is great. Um, look how many clicks I got. Those don't really matter because they're not impacting your bottom line of your credit union or of your business. But there are sort of three followers that are the three metrics that are really important to measure. And what we recommend is measuring at least every 90 days. So going back in on your post, throwing it into Excel, or there's tools online that'll let you do it. I think for like $40 a month, we use Loomly at our agency, but there's Hootsuite, Sprout Social, a lot of effective tools that'll let you do it. And you're going to really want to look at three metrics. So number one is growth, because growth is exponential. So if you are growing... If you grew 8% in three months, that's fantastic. You grew almost 3% per month. That means in a year, you'll grow to 27%. You know, in two years, you'll grow by 54%. So the biggest thing is see that growth rate. If you're not growing, if you stayed stagnant, even if you got a lot of likes, that's concerning because really growth is something that's nonlinear. It takes time. It's exponential. But that's what you should be looking at. Is my account growing? Is that rate of follower growth increasing or at the very least positive? You don't want to be decreasing in your month over month or your quarter over quarter growth rate. Um, the second thing that's really important is engagement. So per post on average, how many people like it? Because maybe 2,000 people see every one of your posts on average, but if only five people like it, that content's not very strong. That's when it's time to revisit that content, say, hey, are we giving ads to people? Are we giving content that's really helpful and making their day better? Um, and at the same time, what you'll find is some posts do really, really good and they get super engaged. So what you can tell yourself is like, oh, people seem to really love tips about saving money. We should do a whole series and we should make lots of posts about saving money. Oh, people don't seem to really like posts about new checking accounts for some reason. Okay, well, that's not something that really works on social media. Let's not make that type of content. It really is key those engagement scores. You should be looking at it, find your most engaging posts and then make more posts like that. And then finally, by far the most important thing is conversions. So this can often look like setting up a questionnaire when someone opens a new account or a loan. Where did you see us? See if you're attributing it to Facebook. Are they saying, oh yeah, we saw your Facebook post, but track what's actually happening in the door, who's coming into your credit union to where they're coming from. Because without that, even if you see great growth and engagements, you're going to have no way of knowing if your social media and marketing is actually resulting in new sales and new top line revenue for your credit union. 
by tracking that, by having that sort of questionnaire, it's very easy to link the two together. Okay, we had 100 new membership accounts open this last quarter. 30 of those said that they came from Facebook. Great. That's a really good metric. If it's we had 100 new membership accounts open and we just partnered with Growth by Design, have a really cool website, and we just started doing Facebook marketing, and also we threw this huge fundraiser, and we never asked people where they're coming from, well, you don't really know exactly what's working, you just know it's working, which is good, but that's not going to give you the level of precision and data you need to sort of allocate your marketing budget more effectively next quarter. So um, that was a lot. Does anyone have any questions after kind of all of that and basically distilling, and I guess a very short sort of 15 minutes, how to grow on social media? You are always such a wealth of knowledge for our credit unions and have always been a fantastic partner. I, I know there's always so many more questions about social media because it kind of feels like this strange bird that we can't catch. Um, so specifically, I, you had mentioned before we, we've talked about this, um, uh, you know, when we talk about innovation and trends, um, how would you encourage a credit union to stay innovative, um, in integrating their social media approach? So there are, it, that's a really good question. Um, the short answer is that Typically, innovation is difficult. You know, it requires monitoring what's going on in social media platforms. We actually have a research, a two-person research team here at Step Up Social, and their only job is to like see what's trending next and kind of keep up with all of that. So it's not easy. You know, obviously, it's some of the things that you would assume. Reading industry publications is great. Um, actually being on social media and seeing what people are posting is fantastic. Um, there's some very solid like social media newsletters that I subscribe to that I read as they come into my inbox, you know, every week. Um, but the other thing that I do want to caution against is sometimes we'll talk to brands who are very concerned about innovation and very concerned about being up to date, and they won't be doing anything at the moment. And the short answer is getting on social media and making posts and kind of doing that is going to be infinitely more effective than not being on social media altogether. So what we would recommend to credit unions is... Yes, you can always be innovative and more trendy and more trend-based, but you are in a fairly conservative industry. There's not a ton of credit unions on social media. There's even rare credit unions that are using those three principles I mentioned, which is posting consistently, micro-boosting everything, and then analyzing it every 90 days. By just doing those things, you're going to be ahead of 80% of your competition, 80% of other credit unions in this space, anyone that's actually doing that. And that's a really great place to start. I wouldn't worry about maybe being in the top 1% and most innovative credit unions on social, because just having a presence and dig dedicating time and energy to it is going to be enough to put you ahead of 80%, uh, enough to automatically place you in that top 20% bucket, if that makes sense. Um, but that does bring it to me to a really good point, which is sort of your in-house, which is kind of this in-house versus agency consideration. We really get four very frequent um, questions, which is, which platform should we be on? Which, Misty, you beat me to it. Um, we talked about that kind of who's the target customer on social media platforms, which I mentioned a little bit. Facebook's a little bit older. Instagram's a little bit younger. Um, you know, how often should we post is one. And then the other one that I really get is the in-house versus agency question. And there's no necessarily right answer to it. So if you can do social media in-house and it's cost effective, we absolutely advocate that brands just do it themselves because no one is going to know your credit union better than you and the people that work in that credit union every day in the community. And you can reach out to us, but, you know, we have a New York office and we might know, you know, New York City fairly well, but like we just opened a Los Angeles office. I've never been to LA. So I don't know our LA brands the same way that the, P, that the companies in LA that we work with know LA. So same, you know, kind of on that route, you know, if you're a credit union located in Georgia, Georgia, Florida, you're going to know your community and you're going to know your brand really well. Where it really makes sense to bring on an agency partner is when it starts becoming, there's just not time to get it done. So sometimes we'll talk to brands that have smaller marketing teams. They might have one to two people marketing teams. They might be a small organization. They're like, hey, I know I have to be posting four times a week on Facebook, Instagram. I want to be making some videos for TikTok. I just don't have the time to do this because I'm also running our email marketing. I'm also doing this and I'm also, you know, trying to plan this event. And that's where it might make sense to bring in an agency because again, it's a lot better to work with someone just to make sure it's getting done and it's getting done consistently than not do it at all or keep it sporadic, if that makes sense. It absolutely does. And, and we have seen incredible growth. I mean, we have a partner that we've worked with, um, well, several um, credit unions that you've worked with and you've seen absolutely incredible growth. Um, 
some of those metrics. We probably can't share the specifics of those completely, but I know that, you know, one of our credit unions solved this massive percentage and they were getting um, engagements from, you know, multi-billion dollar credit unions in other states just wanting to follow them for the content that you've created. So we've seen some really fantastic items um, that are really exciting. But it's also nice to know that even our small credit unions or our closed, um, you know, with closed said groups also have access to the same information. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate you saying that, you know, um, I'm always super happy to answer, you know, I know that we're kind of running up on time, but I'm happy to answer any other questions that come up um, on my email as well as this is actually my cell number up here. So if anyone has any questions and then obviously, you know, we do love working with credit unions. We love working with those partners. So if there's ever any interest on working with an agency kind of looking to kind of, you're like, Hey, this sounds great, but I just don't have the time to try to start micro boosting everything myself. I'm always happy for Misty and I to hop on a call with you, you know, kind of talk through your needs and anything we can do to help there. Yeah, absolutely. Emil, thank you so much for your time today. Um, it is always a pleasure to hear you speak. And yes, if anyone needs anything, they have any specific questions, feel free to reach out to Emil or myself.